The word excited came up repeatedly. The players are clearly anxious for a fresh start after a pair of disappointing seasons. They're aware of the fan angst, that toxic environment that had surrounded the program. They saw it at every home game in the form of empty seats. Now, no one was silly enough to bring up Miller's comments to Greg Popovich, a man who doesn't suffer fools or foolish questions. And he was quick to point out when asked if the Spurs were in a good position to sneak up on people with everyone talking about Golden State. His team still had work to do against the Grizz. Well, a great philosopher once compared life to a box of chocolates because you never know what you're going to get. Right now, the Grizzlies are that box of chocolate. Well, the uniforms still say Grizzlies across the front, but the cast of characters keeps changing for that professional basketball team from Memphis. Former West Memphis standout Jarvis Cooper, now a former Memphis Tiger. Head football coach Mike Norvell confirming today Cooper's been granted a release from his scholarship. He has formally announced his first coaching staff at Memphis. It's going to include assistants Pooh Williamson, Joe Esposito, and Saul Smith. So Goodson will be the director of basketball operations, while Keelan Lawson will remain on staff as the director of player development. For the fourth straight year, Lefty wants to get his game right in Memphis. Translated, five-time major champion Phil Mickelson will return to the FedEx St. Jude Classic for the fourth straight year to fine-tune his game for the following week's U.S. Open. And, of course, he'd like to win in Memphis. Mickelson has fared well in recent trips to the FESJC with a pair of top three finishes in each of the past two years. This year's event, less than a month away now, tees off from June 9th through the 12th over at Southwind. While much of Memphis debates what Grizzlies general manager Chris Wallace and former Grizzlies head coach Lionel Hollins were discussing and eating at a local restaurant last night, Sacramento was busy introducing another former Grizzlies head coach, Dave Yeager. Kings rolling out the welcome mat this morning for Yeager, who called the opportunity in Sacramento. A great situation with an organization that he said is on the rise. Also discussed what he feels will be a strong coach GM dynamic with Kings general manager Vladi Divac, who you see pictured. Great. And he also reflected on a very wild past <laughs> 72 hours. Yes, Saturday was an interesting day, Saturday morning, uh, getting the news um, you know, from the Grizzlies. And, and by Saturday afternoon, uh, I think we talked and I said, yeah, I'll be on the first thing smoking in the morning. And uh, you know, got out here on Sunday, uh, I think by noon or one, and, and started meeting. And uh, it's been fantastic and, and a little exhausting, uh, very emotional. Um, and uh, certainly very, very exciting. Well, Jordan didn't do it. Neither did Bird, Magic, Kareem, Wilt, Russell, LeBron. I could go on. No one had ever won the NBA MVP award by unanimous vote until today. Steph Curry taking home his second straight MVP award. This one a historic 100% of the vote. Curry averaged over 30 points a game, shattered the NBA record for three-pointers made in a season, and helped lead the Warriors to the first 73-win season in NBA history. How about some hoop tonight? San Antonio OKC Game 5, series tied 2-2. Thunder 8-0 run to go up to. Anus Cantor the follow. OKC, monstrous advantage, plus 18 on the boards. Final seconds, more controversy. No foul called as the Spurs hack away at Russell Westbrook. He finally gets the whistle, and the continuation gets the and one. Spurs were 40-1 and one at home this year. They've lost twice in the series at home to the Thunder. Thunder take it 95-91. They lead that series now 3-2. Game six back in OKC on Thursday, guys. Big night in sports. Since winning the PBA World Championship in December, Things haven't been the same for Gary Faulkner Jr. It finally sunk in when I got back to Memphis a couple of weeks ago, and that's when it really finally hit me. Facebook, Instagram, walking to a bowling alley, getting mobbed, you name it. It was, it, was pretty, it was pretty incredible. Gary first picked up the sport when he would tag along with his dad to a local bowling alley at two years old, and he never looked back. I think I realized that when I was really young, I've always wanted to be a bowler. I mean, so I think that was always my dream. The wins in 300 games, which is bowling perfection, began to pile up. Gary's first 300 came when he was all of 14 years old. It was to win the tournament, actually, and I felt the ball return spinning, the pin drop in the background, and I can't really remember what I did after the pins fell, but it was... My mom was there. She was emotional. It was pretty It was pretty crazy. A state title and a college championship soon followed. And all along, Gary kept working on his craft. People think it's easy, and it's, it's all about, you have to, we're playing on an invisible playing field. We can't see what's on the lanes, so we have to be able to read our ball motion and make adjustments accordingly, and that's, that takes, that's hard. Gary is a big believer in looking ahead, not behind. His career goal is to become the biggest winner the sport of bowling has ever seen. His advice to kids who may want to follow in his footsteps, grip it 
and rip it. You can do it. I mean, you just got to, just like anything, you got to put the work in. You can't, you can't listen to anybody else. People might think you're crazy. Just, if your heart's telling you to do it, do it. And don't look back. Matt, this is really unprecedented in terms of a group response to a rather serious issue. It absolutely is, Merle. It was certainly a very public response to a very real public relations problem, which is why all 16 coaches that you mentioned took the opportunity to present a united front and defend their university. Now, the allegations brought by last week's lawsuit against UT are serious and potentially crippling to the athletic department. All 16 University of Tennessee men's and women's head coaches were front and center this morning in Knoxville to address the perceived culture in the Vols athletic department due to allegations brought in a federal lawsuit that stated the school had created a hostile sexual environment through its handling of sexual assault complaints made against student athletes. Allegations that all but demanded a response. We don't want the stereotype that there's something out there that's not true. One by one, UT's coaches defended the athletic department. If I had a daughter, I would, I would not hesitate one bit for, for her to come on campus. Head football coach Butch Jones' program is at the center of the most serious allegations. Last year, two of his players were indicted on aggravated rape charges. And just last week, another player was arrested on charges of aggravated assault and false imprisonment. The actions of one reflect on all. I get that. But again, I don't want to diminish the great people that we have here in the administration, the coaching staff, our student body, and our student athletes. In response to the lawsuit, the university issued a statement saying they had acted lawfully and in good faith. I don't want you to think any way, shape, or form that we don't feel for the alleged victims. We feel for them. I heard for them. We all heard for them. So I just I want to make sure you understand that that's that hits at our soul. Now, a number of the coaches mentioned today that the allegations brought in the lawsuit were already being used against the school in recruiting, which, of course, is one reason that the coaches circled the wagons today in the studio. Matt Stark, Fox 13 Sports. Memphis Tigers wide receiver Tanner Rare has emerged as the team's go to guy, a possession receiver who now leads the team in receptions. He's also the runaway leader in dependence. Tanner Rare is not your typical college football player. He's 25 years old. His first try at college football didn't take, but he decided to give it another shot thanks to a piece of advice passed along during a backyard game of flag football. I played flag football with all my brothers, and there's players, Aaron Boone played for the University of Kentucky, and he said, hey man, you're gonna regret it if you don't get back on the field. He did return to football, and two years later was packing his bags for Memphis, leaving his wife Maggie and family temporarily behind at home in Utah, just two days after the birth of his third child. I was without my newborn and my two ch children, and then my wife, so it was hard. He dragged me kicking and screaming, but you know what, I love it. I, I really do. I like it a lot more than I expected. Reunited with his family, Tanner's new football family soon discovered that the new guy came with an entourage. A lot of the team, they're just like, what, how old are you? How many kids you got? No way. I mean, it was just a shock to so many people, and it's like, no, prove it. So I'd have to pull out the phone, and this is my family. <laughs> Some of the guys are like, why are you doing that to the crowd? I'm like, it means I love you to my wife. Oh, like, all right, I'm going to do that to your wife, too. <laughs> oh, no. As you might guess, juggling football and family and school can be quite daunting, not to mention time-consuming. Do you drink a lot of caffeine? <laughs> No, I just try to go, go, go. I, I mean, even the other night I was watching a film and she's like, no, it's time to come to bed. I'd like to say that I'm a really understanding wife that just says, yeah, honey, do what you got to do. But when he gets home from football, I'm, no, you're here. You watch this show with me. Desperate Housewives is on. Or, um, I, I'd love to say that I was more understanding, but he, he keeps me sane when he's home. And win or lose, number 85 is number one where it counts most. With his family. They love to have their friends see him on TV and when they say his name or something, that's my dad, or zoom in. And they're so proud of him. They're his biggest fans. When you get home and you just get told daddy, they don't care what happened in practice or whatever, and they just love you because you're their dad. Life is certainly busy in the rare household right now, and it's about to get busier. Tanner and his wife Maggie are preparing to welcome their fourth child in early January. Matt Stark for Fox Sports.